snake. We've got to go. Do we really, Otacon? You've got Do we really? Waiting for you. Otacon. The test results. Proteome analysis was positive. But the mRNA analysis turned up negative. The wrinkled skin, the hardened arteries. Your early aging symptoms look like classic fairness syndrome. But none of the tests were able to pinpoint the cause. So... Well... Judging by how rapidly the aging has progressed, I'd say... A year at best, right? Snake, let's try another doctor. <laughs> it won't make any difference. I'm not an ordinary man to begin with. Not to mention Fox Die. Not a colonel anymore, Snake. I figured the only place I'd see you dressed like that would be at your daughter's wedding. What are you doing these days? I'm working for an organization under the UN Security Council. The analysis and assessment staff of the PMC Oversight and Inspection Committee. Yeah, I remember the resolution being passed a few years ago. Snake, I uh, came across some information my work. Um. We found him. In the Middle East. What? So if you guys are unaware, this game continues off of Metal Gear Solid 2. And uh, Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of the Patriot, rather. Um, sorry for forgetting that little tidbit of information. Long story short, this is the continuation of that, few, just a few years afterwards. He's preparing to unleash his insurrection. Liquid is lying in wait in a Middle Eastern war zone. Track him. So we have a firm foundation as to how this game is going to progress. Our ultimate objective right now is going to be to find Liquid. We need to find Liquid and stop him from releasing his insurrection. This part isn't important, so I'm just going to skip it. It's just her singing along. I mean, it's kind of important to understand like some background stories, but for the main story itself, it's not really that important. Act 1, Liquid Sun. Honestly, I would say that the most impressive thing about this game is the fact that if you look at how it looks like, it compares to most games that are coming out today. And not only does it hold up to them, it exceeds them. Why does it exceed them? Because this game is from... I'm going to skip this part too. This isn't really that important. It's just going to tell us what to do. He's going to tell us to go ahead, that we're going to meet up with some people, um, some contacts that will uh, will tell us some more information of what we need to do. Alright. I'm just gonna sneak, sneak by this guy. I'm gonna lay down because I, I know what's next. 
and oh yeah, as I was saying, and the cr the crazy part is that this game was released in 2008, very early on in the PlayStation 3's life cycle, and just the sheer fact that this type of game was possible to be made is just crazy in and of itself. Because before, before this game was a thing, there weren't really that many games that took advantage of the PS3 graphics or even the capability of the PS3. Yes, there were good games and all, but they didn't really take advantage of how, how potent, how powerful the PlayStation 3 system could be. This game pushed new boundaries and quite honestly it's probably the reason that we have a lot of very beautiful games now. Before this game there really weren't that many uh, high quality games if you will that you could compare games to. Let's collect our trusty cardboard box. Alright, I'm gonna go equip that. So if we go, nope, if we go into items We'll actually be able to equip some more things. We have an iPod, which is... It has copyrighted music, so I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to equip this cardboard box, and I'm also going to equip... Actually, no, the cigarettes are going to be horrible. Uh, I was going to say I'm going to equip the cigarettes, but that's not a good idea. I'm going to equip the petroleum bombs, because we might be able to use them later on. Uh, I'm going to open this up as well, because it might have something, and indeed it does. It has instant noodles, which I am going to equip, because that is going to come in handy as the food source. And very quickly, I'm going to explain that there are two bars that you guys see there. One that is one very long bar, and the other one that is broken up into four different type, four different tiny bars. What those are, are your health and your, I guess you could call it fatigue. Your health bar is the one that's on top, and that determines how much, essentially, how much life you have left. The fatigue bar is, is a measurement of how tired you are. So the higher the fatigue, the less efficient you will become as a soldier and the less efficient you are the less actions you will be able to do so some simple things such as fighting well it's not really simple but you know things like fighting things like that oh crap they spotted me that they spotted me I'm going to nope nope you didn't see anything you did not see anything you obviously did not see a thing Nope, you do not see anything at all. And I'm just going to stay down there. Hopefully, hopefully this, there you go. You don't see anything. I'm going to go through that little opening here on the side. The only downside to this game is that this game is going to be very slow paced. So it's not going to be the best game to play. It's not going to be the best game to watch. And I do apologize in advance for that. I, I was just kind of going for what felt right to me and, and this game kind of clicked with me when I played it the first time through and all the subsequent times as well. Let's get some arsenal compress. Alright, so slowly make our way past these guys. Since he has his back turn we don't have to worry about being stealthy. Let's change color here. See now that's the interesting thing about this. Oh. Oh, I forgot, this is up here. The guy that was dying. Yeah, that was this guy. He was getting shot at from somewhere up there, and then he falls down to his death. We can pick up the ammo. And if we go over here, we can pick up these guys' ammo. So all of the dead corpses you essentially want to go up to and investigate, because they will have important things. Well, not, not all of them will have important things, but they will have things that you may be able to use for your advantage. Now what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to get this, um, okay, the R2 button is the stun. It's good to know. Alrighty. Oh, crap. I'm not in a good scenario, I'm not in a good situation. Nope, just stay quiet change colors, and then keep running away. Shh, just stay quiet. Be stealthy. They don't know I'm here. I am the perfect soldier. Nobody knows that I'm here. I am the best. I am number one. 
Alright, and there you go. Some more ammo for us. Don't mind if I do. I mean, I'm probably not going to be using that much ammo because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to go for the stealth approach to this game. Which may be a hard thing to do. Okay, from the looks of it, these guys are not going to come in here. So I may be... I'm going to stay right here just in case. Just in case. Actually, it looks like that might... Nope, there are th three guys. Nope, just two guys. Okay. So it looks like I should... Looks like I should be able to sneak by these guys easily enough. Nothing's going on. You see nothing. You see nothing at all. I'm going to have to lay low here for a bit. And just wiggle my way up because that guy spotted me when I was over there and I, and I was a different color. So I'm going to have to just snake my way forward. <laughs> Pun intended there. Don't scare me like that. Yeah. Please walk away so I can get up and walk faster. Okay. You don't see me, which is a good thing. There you go. Awesome. And, uh, <laughs> pretty funny thing is that in this next area, there's something pretty funny that you could do. I said pretty funny thing, like, multiple times. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. What you can do is, you can actually hop up here and get camouflaged as well. And you'll change into their color. And, see, the funny part is that if you do it three times in a row, you get to snap that guy's penis off, essentially. Which is hilarious. Oh, wait, what? Wow, that's an achievement. <laughs> oh, my God. That's pretty funny. See, that's how long I haven't played this game. I haven't played this game in such a long time that they have achievements now. Because I remember that there wasn't... They, they said that they were going to introduce achievements into this game, which I was like, awesome. I'm definitely down for that. Looking forward to the achievements... Because that's going to be a cool thing to do, you know, being able to do these Snake, unique little challenges and stuff. Yeah, I know how to, how to can help you yep. dodge enemy attacks and get past small gaps and I know. Obstacles. I know. Don't worry. I'm going to change color into this camouflage. Just in case I'm spotted, I'll be able to hide quicker. And I won't really have to run as much. Is that an item that's in the corner? It doesn't look like it. Nope, that's not an item. However, there is an enemy over here should take care of that enemy first. In order to take care of that, if I remember correctly, there you go, hold the R1 button. Let's pick him up. Let's drag him over here. And let's just choke him out. Just until he passes out. We don't want to kill anybody. I'm trying to do a stealthy approach, and if they find him when he's passed out, they will, uh, they'll just think that he just fell asleep. Hello. Playboy. <laughs> I forgot that was the thing. Alright, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna leave you alone for now. Because I don't have to worry about you as a as an enemy anymore. And I'm going to proceed over here. Oh crap, that was a noise. Yeah, that's the thing about this difficulty. They can actually hear you. It's not like other difficulties that uh that they're really dumb. And this one, if you make a noise or if you'd make if you throw something, if you move fast enough, they'll be able to spot you. Granted, it's not the best AI in the world, but for a 2008 game, it's pretty goddamn cool that they were able to program the AI with so many different functions and capabilities and uh, abilities, you know? Crap. I'm gonna have, as soon as he starts running, if he does start running, I'm going to have to go faster because he knows where I am. Crap. You don't see anything. I think they, they found the, the guy that was passed out. Yeah, they found the guy that was passed out. That's a bit of a shame because... Well, I mean, it's not... Crap. It's not that bad because I was able to just knock him out and... Nobody knows that I'm here, you know? They're just like, oh, guy's passed out. Then maybe somebody attacked him, maybe somebody didn't. And they're, they're leaning more towards somebody did attack him, which is essentially what happened. But, um, they can't actually pinpoint where I am in the world, which is good. 
because that be that gives us time. That makes sure that we don't have to deal with a lot of enemies at the same time. I'm just gonna stay still here for a bit because if I remember correctly, yeah, this guy's gonna walk by. Alrighty. I'm gonna hop down here. Is that guy? Yep, this guy's coming this way. Crap. Let's see. Nope, he's not coming this way. Okay, that's good. Oh, crap. R really, dude? Well, time to fight. I don't want to... I didn't want to fight because I was trying to be a stealthy guy. Unfortunately, th these guys spotted me, so that means that I'm going to have to fight my butt off right now and get ready for this guy to turn the corner. It's not the most critical thing that I stay stealthy or anything. I'm going to have to get out of here. I'm going to have to get out of here. I just noticed he automatically ate food. Well, that's good to know that he automatically recovers health like that. It makes it a bit easier for me. I assume it's when, when you have it equipped. If you don't have it equipped, I'm assuming that you won't recover health. Alrighty, come on, come on, reload faster, and... There you go. Alrighty, headshots are key to make sure that I don't die fast. Alright, let's see, where are this guy? This guy's over there. Uh, they just threw a grenade here. Well, that's not a good scenario for me. Okay, they don't know I'm here. Well, they don't know that I'm here exactly. I mean, they kind of know that I'm in this general vicinity, but they don't know exactly where I am, which is beautiful. All right, so... I can toss it to this guy and burn him. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'm gonna burn him. I'm gonna throw another one. Then I'm gonna throw another one over there. Okay, that guy was not burned. A bit unfortunate. I think I burned one other guy, though. And why not? Even though you're like two feet from me, and obviously this would probably splash some alcohol onto me, I'll just burn you as well. I just turned into a pyromaniac all of a sudden. Holy crap. Something is wrong with me. What happened? They all died. That's what happened. Alright, so let me pick up... Okay, come on, come on, come on. I'm gonna have to. Oh my god. I'm gonna have to fight all of these guys. I'm fighting all of these guys before the, the hardest part of the mission actually starts, and of course I die. Oh man, this is going to be a very frustrating playthrough of this game. I will see you guys in a bit. Hopefully in that same area. Alrighty. So we're back into the same situation that we were at, we were at rather, and the funny thing is, if you you have your head in the light, you're stressed out. If you have it in the shade, you don't get stressed out. That's kind of funny. I mean, I understand that it's in the Middle East and all, and you know, heat is much higher uh, in the Middle East, so it would be a bit more understandable to have something like heat be a source of stress. So I understand it. However, it's it's still funny that they thought of so much, you know? Like, they wanted to make sure that they get they got as much close to reality as you can possibly get in a Metal Gear game. Because, let's be honest, Metal Gear games, Metal Gear Solid games, aren't known to be very realistic. I mean, you're fighting against, like, giant robots and all of these other things, which you never would fight against giant robots or any other things. Okay, um, how can I approach this? If he gets close to me, I'm going to try to sneak by, slowly but surely. 
If he gets close to me and, like, tries to investigate my body, I can just stun him with a knife. Because he seems to be the only immediate threat. Okay, that, that works out. He turned around, which means that we'll be able to sneak by. There's two other guys. Okay, there's two other guys there. Gotta get my head into the shade. So, okay, stop moving. Stop moving. Don't move. I can move a little bit. Oh, frick. Shh. If you take them out before they, they radio in for anything, they won't know uh, exactly what happened. And hopefully this guy won't come to investigate. I'm going to stay right here just in case he decides to. Doesn't seem like he will, though. So, since he won't come over here to decide, to, to decide, to investigate, rather, that means that we can start moving forward. Okay, there you go, he turned his back. We can get up, pick up all of their weapons, and then go over here. This is where I was trying to head to, and now you guys see why I was frustrated a bit. Because I was so close to the objective, and then I ended up dying. You know, that's not something that uh, you typically have happen to you. We're already being spied on. That's just great, man. Just perfect. Thankfully, we have really good reaction time, though. And we're able to assess the situation and see that he's not a hostile yet. We're still trying to assess how dangerous he is. And with that, we know that he's a friendly. He's a support. Sorry to keep you waiting, Snake. Allow me to introduce Metal Gear Mark II. Yep. Gear. That's right. Just like Rex. If you guys are unfamiliar, Metal Gear are giant machines that are essentially walking tanks on a much greater scale than the frogs we were, we saw before. And they essentially they're the best method of destroying a facility, an army, or anything else. And Otacon was actually the person who created Rex, who was the first Metal Gear. Or he helped create it, rather. Nice. Purpose goggle that displays radar images and other data in 3D. You can also switch it over to light amplifier. This is awesome, right there. See, you can zoom in. It has heat seeking. It has night vision. It it serves as a binocular, which is kind of funny because binocular means that it's two eyes. So it's monocular, I guess. One eye. I don't know. We can even see how the, how their state is. We can see. If they're angry, if they're happy, if they're scared, or if they're depressed and sad. Here we have another killing option. Instead of just relying on, on our loud-ass uh, assault rifle, we actually have probably Snake's favorite pistol. An M1911A1 operator gun. Then we also have a Trank gun, which he's just like, oh, thoughtful. He puts it away. Which is funny, because he's just like, oh, okay, this is what I really want. By some miracle, it was never recycled. It's getting tough these days, finding decent guns that aren't controlled. He's such an elite soldier that he can tell if it's off or not just by the sound of shooting. Or not really shooting a, not shooting a bullet, but just like dry shooting, if you will. So pressing the trigger and hearing what the noise sounds like. Like this. I'll activate stealth so it doesn't attract any attention. That's probably one of the coolest features out of there for the uh, Mark II. Snake, the informants who said they saw liquid here should be a little further up. Head for the rendezvous point. I've placed a mark on the radar in the upper right corner of the solid eye. It's a war zone out there. Stay on your toes. Yep. I plan to stay on my toes and, uh, stay alive, essentially. 